Now, when I moved to another drug, uh, last year we had the Vostaroxin presented, the Valor trial, uh, the primary endpoint wasn't met. Uh, so Harry, you wanna update us on Vostaroxin, Cytarabine? So uh, uh, Farhad Ravandi is going to update us uh, with, a, with a, a subset analysis of the Valor trial, which was a study done in all adults uh, comparing uh, Vosaroxin at 90 milligrams per meter squared on days one and four um, with um, Arisi a gram per meter squared for five days or just the Arisi for five days. And as we uh, um, uh, talked, uh, as, as we know, it was a negative study. It just barely missed a, being statistically significant for overall survival in this group of patients with relapse refractory disease. But remember, in the design of the study, patients were stratified based on age. And two-thirds of the patients were actually older than the age of 60, which would make that comparison of Vosroxin RSE versus RSE um, the largest study in older relapse refractory patients. And in that setting, it was a positive study. There was a survival benefit. And what Farhad has updated is that the curves, the survival curves, are, have not come together at two and three years after, um, with two or three years of follow-up. But do you think that's enough to get an approval for elderly patients at least, or I, the drug is for the time being dead? I, I wish it were enough because I think, you know, it's a shame to waste such a large number of patients and resources on a study that actually was positive. You can argue that the improvement of survival at two and three years of about 6% with high dose RSC to 13% uh, uh, isn't much to write home about. Um, however, if you say a, tell a patient that you're twice as likely to be alive three years from now, they might actually go for that. Um, I don't think it's gonna be enough to get approval. It would be a precedent setting approval, approving a drug based on a, a subset. I think the other issue is the control arm of that trial. This is, we all know, you know that's, that was discussed before the trial was mounted. It was an acceptable control arm, but if you're gonna give somebody, even an older adult, intensive uh, salvage chemo, you might give them mitosantrum and cytarabine, and that was not the control arm. Yeah, I and, think your point's well taken for younger patients. I'm not quite so sure for older patients. And yet you look at the trial and you certainly get the sense that vosoroxin is active. Yes. And really what we're seeing is the tyranny of the p-value. Oh, 5.2 is definitely different than 4.8 definitively. It just seems a bit un... Um, I yes, like could I ask my colleagues one sort of more broader question? And that is, uh, we have, it's never been a more exciting time in our field, in the field of AML. We have so many new targets, so many new novel agents with novel mechanisms of action, and the benefits have been somewhat incremental. Even the ratified trial, which is a major, major effort and a positive trial, as Rich said, is an improvement and an advance, but a modest one. What do, what do we feel about the future? What will it take to make a leap in terms of an advance rather than, or, or do you think the future for the next decade or two are continuous small increments? You know, it has been, in, in solid tumors, a minor increment will lead you to an approval of the drug. <laughs> Pancreatic cancer, 12 days, Breast improvement p-value is significant well, while you have a drug. But if the, that, that, that the drug is approved, but if a drug is such a modest advance. Well, but, but, but remember all the published curves that we see in our field in AML every five or 10 years, the overall survival inches up a little bit further. And younger adults because of the supportive care perhaps. <laughs> okay. uh, quite possibly, but in fact, we're continuing to make progress. I think it will be small and incremental. Well, I think no. you have to remember. Uh, uh, but, but why not? Why won't it? What, what is it well, I think you've got, you, you've, got two problem, you've got two problems. It's a heterogeneous disease. Yeah. So we're dealing with disease subsets. And you've, it's a polyclonal disease. So you know, you, to think that we can uh, uh, cure FLT3 AML or even IDH positive AML with one of these inhibitors is probably naive because it's possible that adding chemo to it, okay, maybe in some patients in transplant. But you've got most AMLs, especially in older adults, as Mark has eloquently pointed out on many occasions, have these root mutations like yeah, TEP2 and ASXL1 and dmt 3 which we haven't really been able to deal with other than transplant so far. Whether prolonged hypomethylating agents will change that, I don't know. But I think we, we have to be happy with incremental increases. I mean, myeloma has more drugs, adding them together, and, and we'll be talking about some drugs that maybe will be more globally active. So let's, uh, but uh, can well, I just say one thing about Marty, it, I think I sense his frustration because Marty has actually published for the intergroup, the first intergroup trial okay. in APL that showed such a monumental jump from chemo to atra-based therapy in that North American but intergroup again, trial. But again, targeting it's either a, a PMR or a relatively narrow, uh, okay. yes. pathway, well, which supports what Rich is saying. Let's move to the